Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at Darksiders Genesis. Darksiders Genesis is the prequel to the previous Darksider games and serves as a spin-off to the main series. Developed by Airship Syndicate and released on December 5th, 2019 for the PC slash Stadia and February 14th, 2020 for the PS4, Xbox One and Switch. It takes place years before the first Darksiders game and sees the series get a fresh coat of paint once again. Darksiders has always been an interesting series as every entry always tries to be something different. In Genesis's case, it's a top-down RPG, retaining the puzzle and combat elements from the previous games and now has cooperative play for the first time in the series. At first, you think it's like Diablo because of how it's being shown from gameplay demos, but it is nowhere near a Diablo clone since there really is no loot system. The game is heavily relied on exploration, an easy to learn upgrade tree, and teamwork, should you have a friend to play with. But don't worry, the game is still doable on solo. This first bit is taken straight out of the Darksiders fandom wiki, shout out to fandom. From the dawn of creation, the Charred Council has maintained the balance across existence. Carrying out their orders are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, Nephilim who have pledged themselves to the council and have been granted immense power. But it came at the cost of wiping their own kind on their home planet, Eden. Still repenting from the horrible events, War and Strife are assigned a new mission by the council, to find Lucifer, who has been plotting to upset the balance by granting power to master demons throughout hell. War and Strife must hunt down these monsters, gather information, and fight their way through a tangled demonic conspiracy that will forever upset the balance and change all of creation. So the balance is pretty much between angels, demons, and humans, and if one ends up fighting the other, the horsemen are there to ensure safety between all races. If one race does something horribly wrong, say demons attack humans for instance, the balance will shift and thus ruin the council's reputation and make the horsemen's lives harder. That's how I've interpreted it. Let me know in the comments if it's meant to be something different, or if it's just more than that. The two main protagonists are Strife the Gunslinger and War the Swordsman. These two develop a personal relationship throughout the game, and you'll be able to see this from the many conversations that you'll have throughout the levels, as well as combos that can be found as part of exploring. You know, if Lucifer is as dangerous as the Council says he is, why do they send just the two of us? Death and fury attend to other matters. It is not our place to question the will of the Council. It's not my place to question your wardrobe. But I still think your armor could use some more creepy faces on it. Strife always tries to make War smile and have a laugh, as there are many jokes and things he'll say to War, which kind of got annoying as I reached the halfway mark. Like yeah, I get that they're trying to paint Strife as the funny guy of the Four Horsemen, and it's fine to crack jokes here and there, just not as much. War is the more serious horseman, as he has always been, from the first game to now. He tries to keep himself sane by not killing demons unless it is necessary, and keeps his word when it comes to the balance. A loyal foot soldier, I would call him. Side characters play a part too, and there are three that will help you on your adventures. Volgrim and Dis are demon merchants that exchange souls for character upgrades, and Samael is a central character, who helps strife and war throughout their journey. Tragic fate has brought me great pleasure. Let me repay you. Volgrim has continued to track Lucifer's power. It seems he has visited another of the masters. Darksiders Genesis takes everything from the previous games and tries to put it all into one package, combining action, puzzle solving, and story. The top-down camera view gives a new perspective for players and earning abilities and upgrades is different this time around. I will be reviewing this segment from a single player standpoint and not co-op. I mainly played Strife as well, so I don't think I'll be covering War unless I need to mention him for something specific. The protagonists have their own set of gear and skills, which can be earned through exploration and purchasing from Volgrim and Dis. Strife has two pistols that can have a primary and secondary fire. He has different kinds of ammunition and it can be reassigned to either fire of your choosing. I always ran the standard shot as my primary since that has infinite ammo and my secondary would be one of the ammunitions. One that I ran the most was the charge shot, where holding the left trigger would fire a powerful shot capable of piercing through multiple demons. Another one is the static shot which fires a lightning bolt that connects to multiple demons from the first target that you electrocute, and it makes killing large crowds of demons a lot easier. The game freezes when you are swapping ammunition, so there's no stress to swap in the middle of combat. Drive can also go on a hot streak, where once he does a certain amount of damage to demons in a short period of time, his shots will upgrade, and each shot has its own effect when the hot streak is active, 
Aside from the ammunitions, Strife also has abilities such as Shadow Clone, which summons a clone of Strife, deals damage and acts as a distraction for demons, and World Ender, a Kamehameha move that disintegrates any demons within its radius. Strife also has double swords and a dash move, which you can use to change up combat flow and dodge attacks as you're fighting. Combos are simple and easy to learn, and are shown to you at the bottom right corner of your screen, provided you decided to keep them on. I kept them on myself to learn the combos, and it's not too visually obstructive, since the text is small. The creature core system is an interesting mechanic that seems hard at first because of how dawny it is with all these icons and things, but it's easy to learn. Essentially, you start off with a main core, which is placed in this slot here. It provides a wild bonus, meaning any stack core that you place in there will increase your power. Now power is the figure that is used to calculate how strong war and strife will be, and you'll need to increase it in order to play levels. The three stats are wrath, health, and attack. Once you assign your first core, it works like a power switch, with the cores being your fuses. You'll move through the switch one by one, slotting in different cores to maximize and increase your power. One thing I should mention are the little diamonds below the slots. This means what level the core can be used up to. So, for example, if I had a level 3 core and I was to slot it into a 1 diamond slot, I could only use that core at level 1. This provides some depth and gets the player to decide which cores they want to use at certain slots. It is not required to put a different core into something that doesn't match the stat, but it is highly beneficial to do it for that stat bonus. Creature cores are earned from killing demons and bosses, each demon having their own core. Cores are leveled by obtaining the same cores or purchasing them from Volgrim. Minor cores drop from all demons and mages drop from bosses. Volgrim and Dis will sell you character and weapon upgrades in exchange for souls and boatman coins, which are acquired from killing demons, fighting chests, and breaking the environment. Volgrim offers new ammunition, potion upgrades, stones to increase your health and power, and creature cores to help you level them up. He also sells creature core packs which are unlocked once you completed certain parts of the game. Dis sells new character moves and passive upgrades such as increased ammo capacity, longer dash, quicker hot streaks, and more. Exploration is very important in Genesis, as you can find chests, coins, keys, stones, and secret entrances. There are many different chests, from items to abilities. Trickster doors are areas that require a trickster key, which is bought from Volgrim or found in game. As you progress through the game, you'll get special items that are used for puzzle solving, but can be used during combat as well. For example, War gets a blade that is used to activate switches by throwing the blade directly at it. Though the puzzles were built for co-op, I think the time windows are longer when you play single player and you're able to switch between War and Strife for different puzzles, which is nice to have as a solo boy. Graphically, I think Airship nailed the atmosphere and look out of the park. Sure, it may not look like a modded Skyrim or Witcher 3, but it certainly gets the job done of painting the demon world. The particle lighting effects work well together. There are moments where the camera goes to an overhead view and you can just see how beautiful this game really looks. Now for graphic settings, there really isn't much here. You got your textures, your anti-aliasing, post-processing, and shadows, but that's about it. You can't really go and edit certain settings, but I say it still gets the job done. Performance-wise, the game is well optimized, and I was able to average well over 100 frames at around high settings, no shadows on my GTX 1060. I have two problems with this game, the beginning of the game and the camera. Let me explain the beginning one first. I'm not butchering the introduction itself, as it's pretty good and sets the scene for the events to come. I'm talking about all the menus that pop up when you first play. Once you get into the level, when you press main menu, you will actually see all these different menus, but I have no idea what they do. The game doesn't mention these menus at all until you get to a certain point, and it made the game feel a bit overwhelming for me, as all these options are here, but you're left with figuring out what the hell it does and whether you're supposed to know about it now or later. Thankfully, the game does tell you about these menus, but it felt daunting for me to see basically everything the game has to offer at the beginning. The other issue is the camera. Now sometimes in certain scenarios, the camera angle wouldn't look right and enemies you can't see are usually highlighted, which is fine, but it kills the whole point of even having a top-down camera. Why bother putting outlines on enemies when you could just show them all with one angle? Even with the outlines, you may be shooting at something else instead of directly at them, so you don't know for sure. I think if they put some final work in for the camera, they could have made the camera see everything that needs to be seen, and not be forced on like an angle or something. Overall, I had a fun time playing Genesis. It's my first dive back into the series in years, and I'm excited to dive back into the previous games on PC. 
The top-down camera view works, the combat and puzzle solving are great, and it really helps solidify what happens prior to the first Darksiders game. It stays true to the predecessors, and I'm excited to see what they have in store for Darksiders 4, should that ever exist. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed, like the video. If I missed anything, comment down below, subscribe for more, and I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.